A federal high court in Lagos rules that marriage certificates issued by EcoE Registry were worthless. A federal government says otherwise or seek to find answers. Nigeria's debt profile rises to 38.005 trillion between July 1st and September 30th, 2021. Just how do we stay afloat? The National Universities Commission ranks University of Ibadan as fourth in its latest 2021 ranking. And we'll be talk, taking a look at the dailies with an analyst to review them. Well, many thanks for joining us on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadone. And I am Messi Bopo. It's good to have you join us this Monday, this beautiful morning. All right, and as always, uh, we'll start off with uh, what's trending across our social media spaces and the world Nigerian and indeed uh, also maybe the world, you know, we're talking about. And uh, the first one we will focus on this morning is the Omicron variant and, of course, uh, the red list. And uh, fortunately, as it were, Nigeria and uh, 10 other countries have been removed from that list, uh, which was put uh, by the United Kingdom. Well, some have said it is some cherry news, uh, but over time, uh, we have had to discuss on the show here, and uh, we just thought uh, it was out of um, all the, uh, you know, talks or the conversation or the negotiations, and of course, some um, outcry that eventually the UK government uh, took Nigeria off the red list. Merci. Well, uh, it's a very good one that we have been taken off the red list, but it doesn't also stop the fact that there are still some issues and some concerns that we need to address. And uh, if you actually look at it, it feels like there's been a war. Uh, it doesn't feel like there's been a war. And I'm thinking that for us to get to that point, you know, we need to begin to put our acts together for uh, political power equals economic power. So if we sort our economy, if we have some economic might and strength and we're able to put a house together and fix ourselves, I'm not sure that, you know, in the future we'll probably have a reputation of all of this. So, well, it's a good one. Uh, it's, it's a very good one. I mean, a lot of people for once have actually supported this government uh, for that particular action of uh, reciprocating uh, the gesture that was done by the United Kingdom. If you look at it in all in all ramification, it's not fair. You know, it's so unjust. If you're saying you're putting this country and all of these countries, especially, you know, in Africa on that red list, you want to begin to also look at the other countries uh, and find out why are we on the red list and why are they not on the red list? Because they seem to have more cases, you know, than some of the countries in the continent. So scientifically, it is not, you know, correct. And in all fairness, it is not correct. So it's a good one that we have been taking out, but the, the, the issues, um, you know, that probably will lead to all of this uh, needs to be addressed. We need to begin to put our acts together. We can't constantly be very dependent, you know, on the West for everything that we want. And, you know, COVID-19 should be, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that it should have been or should be an eye opener for everyone. Hmm. Well, it is, it is an eye opener for everyone and uh, we should, uh, Africans, that is, uh, not be blamed because we were the ones who discovered uh, the variant here. Yeah, I mean, we just, it just felt as though we're being punished for, you know, trying to save the world as it were. In South Africa, they were really forthcoming. They were not in denial. When they found, the, they found that particular or discovered the Omicron um, variant, uh, they announced it to the world. I didn't even see any reason why we should be, you know, you know uh, punished as it were. But some other issues actually came out of all of this and uh, you know there's this some um, issue between um air peace and of course and uh, you know emirate airline uh, there's this uh, bilateral service agreement uh, popularly called um, basa before now uh, it was a uh, nigerian uh, gave uh, the uae uh, the the united um, the emirate airline rather about 21 spots and we heard that we did not even get commensurate you know slots uh, you know to fly within that particular space but from what we understand right now our slots are to uh, to app is um has actually increased uh, to about seven and uh, the issue of diplomacy you know came to the front burner in all of this uh, you know yesterday you know it was almost like a heated um, an argument between uh, both some guests that we had that uh, you know one of them was saying that 
uh, we should avoid using some words we, which uh, uh, connotes that uh, countries are actually at war when they talk about diplomacy. So we should not usually retaliate, you know, and other words. But the good thing is that right now we are particularly off that list, and uh, you know, Nigerians can, you know, actually fly, you know, into the United Kingdom. Another story trending right now is at the nation's premier university, that's at the University of Ibadan. And from the latest ranking released by the Nigerian Universities Commission, uh, the University of Ibadan you know, came tops uh, out of all the universities uh, in Nigeria. Mercy, did you graduate from UI? No, I did not. But, uh, you know, UI is a very uh, prominent university. And from 2016, uh, UI has actually been, you know, topping uh, 100, you know, in the world, if I'm not mistaken. Now, there are a lot of factors, there are a lot of things that are actually working out for them. For the fact that, yes, they are actually, um, you know, if you look at the time that we're actually established, we're looking at um, 1932, originally established, and of course, they gained full independence in 1962. That's also one thing that is working for them. Uh, another factor also, because, you know, with all of this ranking, there would be some uh, criteria that would be used. But, you know, generally speaking, I feel that um, the UI is such a great university uh, with 13 faculties, uh, best in medicine, best in economies, and you want to go on. The list is endless. So I think they do deserve it. And I'm hoping that all of the universities in Nigeria, you know, would actually look at what UI is doing and see how they can replicate. Well, it is a good thing that um, the University of Ibadan has actually ranked him first out of all the universities in Nigeria. But then again, we should uh, move away from just, uh, you know, being the first uh, in Nigeria, you know, because uh, the last time I saw such rankings across the world, Nigeria was nowhere to be found amongst the top 100. It is really not something that uh, <coughs> we should be, you know, uh, <laughs> talking about because uh, if we're not in the, first I think it was, I think it's, it was 1,000. You know, from 20 uh, okay. from 2016, yeah. uh, UI would always represent Nigeria mm. in the 1,000. So but that we need to first one 100. 1,000 is way far. Mercy of all you invest in the world. But, but the fact that we even made it to 1,000 is something Mercy. to appreciate. We, we can do better. No, no, but, but, so basically, it is opposed to the fact that uh, we need to, you know, step up uh, our educational standards and infrastructural development in, uh, in our investor systems so that uh, Nigerians can actually, you know, Compete. raise their head in, uh, in, in pride and say that uh, whatever I can get from the University of California, you know, can be gotten here in Nigeria, so we don't really you know, need to, you know, all travel out to get the better education as we try. Because before now, uh, back in the day, we used to have exchange students come to Nigeria, you know, to learn from our universities, and we also do some sort of exchange programs with other universities. But lately, I mean, uh, the I don't, I don't even want to talk about. I don't want to talk about, you know, the curriculum. Yes. I don't want to talk about the curriculum. I would like to stay with the learning environment because the environment on its own mm. has a lot to impact. The environment on its own would tell yeah. i mean that's why you would hear a lot of persons say traveling is such an adventure when you travel it's important that you take out time to travel you know within the country outside of the country because by traveling you are educated so first of all let's look at our learning environment i'm hoping that we can do better i, I really do not know but the couple of universities that i've actually visited it is really horrible i mean talking about the infrastructure uh, you look at the classrooms or the lecture rooms, uh, as you want to put it. Some of them do not. Some people, you would be shocked that a lot of people still sit, students still sit on the floor these days, you know, to take lectures when we're in the 21st century. I don't want to go, you know, <laughs> through the entire, I mean, the nine yards of how the infrastructure of our, you know, higher institutions are in, you know, uh, the, the part of the country. I mean, in some part of the country, mm -hmm. if not all really really bad and sometimes you hear we have labs how many of these labs are functional <laughs> the chemi <laughs> i don't want to say it but probably saying this might just you know put everyone i remember a time where i, I had to be told to imagine that there was a computer Imagine you being in a computer class and you're being told to imagine that there was a computer in front of you imagine that there was a monitor now, a good thing, I was privileged, I used the word privilege. I was privileged to have seen, you know, a computer, a laptop, or see a monitor prior to this time. So imagine someone who has not seen uh, or doesn't have access to a laptop or computer, and then you tell them to imagine. 
You, well, how do you imagine what you don't even you, know? You have to have a very vivid imagination to be able to achieve that. You know, you know so back it, in the day, mercy for all that you said, it just uh, brought me back. I don't know how it is right <laughs> now. Back in the day when I left, uh, when I left school, we well, did a course in Management Information System, MIS. You know, basically, that was like, uh, you know, the peak of when uh, the internet and then people going uh, to the cafes to browse and all that, uh, you know, was becoming uh, popular. This was like in 2000, 2001. You know, so we did a course in Management information system so we're we're being taught about the computer parts and everything the only thing I got to see was a diskette you know so <laughs> so I had uh, uh, the students at the computer science um, you know uh, department they had to go to do practicals outside this it was that bad you know I, I, I want to believe that uh, the things have changed over time. I'm not gonna oh my darling I, I would I, I would be yeah. sorry to say that things would not change no, or maybe I, have I, not I, changed. I want to believe that each student should have a computer if you're studying computer science without a computer or a laptop I don't know what you No, do. I'm just saying that if you look at what we're just talking about basic infra infrastructure now yes. and the learning environment you go to some of those universities they don't even have power supply I mean the lecturers mm -hmm. are just you know somewhere and they have a lot of work to do the but you they don't have power supply. They don't have power supply. They're just there, and you're expecting them to assess students in that condition. <laughs> they could be very aggressive. Everywhere is very hot. The the, the, yeah. the whole learning place. You go to the lecture rooms. Yeah. There's really nothing to write home about. Uh -huh. I remember at the time where I was still schooling. You know, I was still in Nigeria, and then I had a friend who was in Ghana, mm. and then he would say, "I'm still in school," and I'm like, oh, "What are you doing in school?" He said, "Everywhere is lit because there's light, there's power. Mm. Uh, that would be the word. Everywhere is lit." So how many of the universities can we say that, you know, the learning environment is very conducive and we can compete not, 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 with not our contemporaries, much. not outside of not the world much. entirely, but within, you know, West African region. Let's even say for Ghana. Uh, let's even talk about access to Internet. Let's even talk about a lot of issues and not to even talk about the curriculum. So um, there's a lot to go. But if you also look at it, you look at our budget. It just shows you that we don't even pay attention. It is not even necessary for us. And uh, because wherever you put your money, wherever your heart is, That's your money would definitely yeah, go. So mm -hmm. our money is not going there. It just shows that our heart is not even there. All right. Once again, we must say um, a big congratulations to the University of Ibadan, you know, for actually um, achieving that particular fit, being the the first ranked uh, among some other universities in Nigeria. The, this is a call to uh, the entire Nigeria uh, university system, you know, to up their game. So aside from getting uh, UI top, uh, other universities too, you know, would be upgraded. And of course, our children and our students, you know, would have uh, you know, a very conducive atmosphere to learn and they can actually compete favorably amongst their peers across the world. It is the breakfast on the Plus TV Africa. We'll take a quick break and then call it Kolawale or Tunde Kolawale will be joining us uh, but off the press uh, off the press in a moment to join us today.